guys, welcome back. Vishnu here from Neo Rehab. So today is the first episode series that we are beginning with, and the first episode is going to be about occupational therapy evaluation assessments. So before we start, hope you had fun with the last video, which was our introduction. So let's get into this video with full energy, and let's see what a framework looks like for an occupational therapy assessment in neuro rehabilitation. So let's get to the video. Before we get into the video. First, we need to understand the difference between what an assessment is and what an evaluation is. So let's take a look into that. So what an evaluation is, it's basically the overall process of gathering and interpreting the data that is required to plan an intervention. Now, what an assessment refers to is the specific method that you use to collect the data, which is one component of the whole evaluation process. So specifically when working with neuro rehab, you're dealing with a lot of adult patients. So before we get into this whole charade of what to assess, let's take a closer look at what our role is in neuro rehab so that we have a better understanding as to what we should look at and what we don't need to look at. As we all know, occupational therapists are concerned with occupations and occupations are any activity or task that the client chooses to perform under their own interest. These can be activities or tasks that they want to, need to, or are expected to do. Now, since occupational therapy revolves around the central concept of participation and or independence in these occupations, clients with specific neurological illnesses such as uh, stroke, spinal cord injury, or seizure disorders, or even progressive neurogenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's, uh, or they could have um, ALS or they could have Parkinson's. These conditions would impede their occupational participation because of the primary and secondary effects of the condition. Hence, occupational therapy is very important in adult neuro rehabilitation to foster the whole participation component into their daily living skills. An assessment serves as a pathway in establishing the baseline to the client's pre-morbid, personal, occupational and environmental status. Now, understanding the lived experience of the client and building rapport with them is one of the most important steps in the whole rehabilitation process. And gathering specific details regarding their occupational profile helps in building better rapport with the client. And this would help the therapist in understanding where the client has to go to in terms of their occupational functioning. Now, this is the reason why an assessment is so important because it provides you with a basic pathway, like a framework on which things you have to work on to get the client to where they were before, if it is possible. So to make the whole gist of assessment simple, I'm going to divide this into three major components. The first component is the demographic component. Second is the profile component and third is the functional status component. Now in demographic component, we know it's, it's self-explanatory. You need to get the client's name, age, gender, their address, where they where they're specifically, how to contact them and uh, what language they speak, the educational status of the client, work status of the client, uh, what are their cultural and religious orientation, things like that. Now coming to the second component, the second component is the profile component. Under the profile component, you need to build up a complete profile of the client, which should have the details such as the diagnosis and the present medical history. You need to know what comorbidities the client had with reference to their past medical history. You need to know their past occupational status and what their current occupational status is if the client is from a subacute or an outpatient referral. If the patient needs a caregiver, you need to know the caregiver status, who's going to be the major caregiver. You need to understand what type of home environment the client is living in. And you need to understand what type of equipment that the patient might have had already if they had some previous condition before. And then you need to understand the client's roles and routines per particularly performed with within the context of house and outside. So the profile component consists of these things, specifically different types of histories family history, medical history, and you need to know their occupational history. And then you need to know the details regarding the home environment and the social support that the client might be receiving. So 
in the occupational profile one of the most important components that you need to assess is the occupational status assessment and this requires you to assess their ADLs, IADLs, work and leisure. So specifically for ADLs you can use the modified Barthel index, you can use the FIMFAM. There are two, two versions of FIMFAM, the old one and the new latest one which has extended ADLs in it. So particularly you can do an IADL assessment if required, you can use a Lawton Brody IADL scale. Uh, in terms of work assessment, if it's an OP patient that's coming to you, so you need to understand the nature of the work. So specifically, you need to get to know the environment that they work in. So all specific personal, social, occupational and environmental details that are pertaining to the occupation. And in terms of leisure assessment, you can use a leisure inventory uh, to get details of what, uh, what leisure status the client has. So the third component, the third and final component is the clinical evaluation of functional status. So I'm going to keep it very simple and very short. You need to, when you assess the client the first time, you need to know what posture the client is maintaining, what attitude the client is maintaining, what their vitals are, and then you need to know their uh, specific speech status, mental health status, cognitive status. Then you need to assess their cranial nerves, get to know their uh, sensory assessments, superficial, deep and cortical level sensors. Uh, then you need to assess them for their tightness, contraction, deformity, uh, tone, range of motion. Then you can go into assessing their muscle strength, coordination. Then you can do the functional mobility assessment, specifically bed mobility assessment, so that you need you can know whether the client is able to come up to sit by themselves. If they're good with that, then you could process into uh, progress into uh, specifically understanding whether they can proceed from sitting to ambulating outside. So guys, in conclusion, this is the whole assessment format that I basically follow, which has three major components, the demographics, the profile, and then the status, functional status. So I hope this serves as a simple framework that you can build upon in your clinical practice. And uh, remember, a detailed assessment is very important to understand the whole profile of the client. So I hope this helps you in your clinical practice. So if you have any queries, uh, any suggestions or any comments, please do leave it down there in the comment box. Uh, if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for new and further episodes. Uh, so the next episode is going to be specifically about a very underlooked concept in occupational therapy. So stay tuned for it. Until next time, this is Vishwaram Kumar signing off from Neoria. Thank you so much.